bands at school when I was about 18 and I joined a studio when I was about 19 or 20 I've been doing it about 12 years I guess 13 years did you always find yourself leaning more towards the producing side of it the techno technology as opposed to the music um the whole thing kind of happened by accident uh, I just got um, this band called yes asked me to produce them and they were completely unknown at the time and uh, I just kind of got sucked into this uh, technical rock thing, you know. And yes, was not uh, your basic sound in the band. I mean, for the first time out for you, that must have been quite a challenge. Yeah, I've been I've been engineering for about you know three years, and you know when that happened, but it was a very challenging thing, absolutely. Which was the which yes albums? I know, but of course, our viewers may not. Which yes albums did you produce? Or the, it was the first one was the yes album. And then came Fragile, Close to the Edge, um, Three Layer, Tales of Topographic Oceans. Um, All the big ones. And the live album and stuff like that. Are you happy to see Yes back on the charts? Now? Very happy. I'm really happy for them. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, great. What was it like working with them at that time? Did they have any idea of what their career would do by the start? I don't think they really knew, you know, what kind of impact they would have on, on people. But uh, did you work closely with the arranging of the songs, and did you know the sound that they were going for right from the get-go? No, it was more, you know, it just came together. You know, we tried to experiment a lot and be different. Bruford especially didn't want a stock kind of drum sound. And uh, Chris Squire's sound, you know, was just... He wanted his bass to cut through, and the only way to do that was to put lots of treble on it. over to upstate New York in Woodstock for about six years and I started to miss the city a little bit and didn't want to move to uh, Los Angeles or New York and, and I just decided to come down to Atlanta it's, it's real easy down here the southerns are real laid back you know so not, not a lot of Brits here in Georgia are there? Uh, there's a few yeah um, um, Steve Marriott's here um, let's see who else Folk Hat comes down here quite a lot like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you came down from, from uh, Woodstock and, yeah. and you checked out some studios. come to a town with a need, you know, looking for a town that's going to give me work or, you know, I'm going to find talent from because most of the bands I produce don't come from Atlanta, you know. I did some stuff with Steve Marrett the other day, but um, I just worked with an, a Scottish band uh, called Palace, and Blackfoot's not from Atlanta, really. And uh, I just ba basically flying people that want to work with me down here. What was this place before you made a studio? There's, a, there's like a big movie house in Atlanta called The Fox. And uh, at one time, they were going to tear it down. It's, it's a real beautiful building. And the committee bought this place, and they were going to call it The Little Fox in case it got torn down. When it got saved, I bought this. You know, that's the deal. And was it, was it vacant at the time? Mm-hmm. When you came in, was every, all the fixtures still here? It was just like you see it now, almost, you know. 
I fell in love with it as soon as I walked in the door. The, the fixtures alone, I mean, you're going to keep all the antiques, like the old uh, movie uh, projector upstairs? Sure, sure. <laughs> Maybe when I'm old and gray, I'll open up a movie house again. <laughs> How, yeah, really, you can convert it into that. What, this, this, this area, as we see it now, this the actual production facility, is it going to go through uh, modifications as we, you know, as you continue here? Or? Yeah, I'm always working on the building and getting new equipment and stuff like that. Yeah. This idea of not having any separation between the producer and the band, why is it better for you? It came about because I, I used to go on the road with Yes a lot, and uh, being on the road so much, when I got back to the studio, I felt like I was in a hospital, you know, or it was real sterile. And uh, there's absolutely no need for, you know, a piece of glass, you know. It just, uh, it just inhibits communication and uh, the group feel like they're in a goldfish bowl or something, you know, it's weird. Why do most studios do it then, if that's the case? Because um, when uh, recording studios were first invented, they only had mono and then it was stereo and then four track. In those situations, you have to be in an isolated room because you've got to mix the sound together without hearing the band. When 16 and 24 track came along, you just throw everything on a separate track, you know, so you don't need that anymore. But the tradition kind of kept on, you know. I see. It wasn't for uh, personnel separation or just to keep the, that whole element of production separate from the musicians. It had nothing to do with that. It's just the way the recording studios, you know, came up and they've just always done it the same way and they saw no reason to change, you know. We were up here last year with uh, Kansas. They were recording at the Lakewood County Fairgrounds. Right. Which had a similar, much larger feel, mm -hmm. but get the open sounds, the bathroom sounds. Tell us how you're using the miking in the bathrooms and all the ambient sounds. Right. Got okay. So, um, I mic the drums in the normal way, you know, just like you would in any studio, but I also mic them from 20 feet away or 30 feet away and get this really big kind of drum sound. I put the uh, guitar cabinets in, in some of the projection booths and stuff and get a real kind of, you know, live sound on them, you know, and uh, it just seems to be a more natural way to go about, you know, making music. Uh, instead of, you know, being in a dead studio with uh, heavily padded walls and recording the sound, then putting reverb back on. Here you've got it, you know, naturally from square one. You've got a more live sound mm -hmm. coming out, so mm -hmm. if you wanted to muffle here or there, you could. Sure, you can get it as dead, dead if you want to. If you find that some of the bands that are coming to you for this facility mm -hmm. and your expertise is to get maybe a raw, more raw edge to their music, which is pretty popular now. Um, they come to me for two reasons, you know, that is one of the reasons. And secondly, you know, like Blackfoot, and wanting to maybe be a little Wait, more. Let me, let me oh, stop you right sorry. there. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> say, say, uh, tell me. Uh, I want you to say they they come to me for two reasons, and give me the two reasons. Okay. They come to me for two reasons. Uh, you know, one is for the raw sound of, of this studio and the live sound, and the other reason is because of my background in progressive music. You know. Um, Blackfoot felt they wanted to be just a little more progressive, not much, just a, a tad, and maybe just change their sound a little bit, and I hope I help them do that. You know. What are you doing? Let's talk a little bit about the Blackfoot project, mm -hmm. since it's a, the current one right mm -hmm. now. Uh, you had heard previous Blackfoot records before you took on the project. Right. Did you hear how you could do better or different for them? Well, um, I haven't been associated with a lot of rock albums, you know. it's. Uh, so for me, it was a learning experience too, working with Blackfoot. I learned a lot about rock and roll from them. But uh, I can take, you know, any group of people and inject some kind of, you know, change in direction for them a little bit or, you know, just some kind of newness for them. Mm -hmm. And how's the, how's the project coming along? Are you happy with it? I'm very happy with it. They're a really nice bunch of guys to work with and uh, it sounds good, it sounds real good. What specifically did you do for Blackfoot on this project that is different? I mean, what type of instrumentation did you incorporate, things like that? There's one track that starts off with like a, it sounds like a ship uh, with a kind of uh, foghorn kind of thing. And it's, it's, a, it's a sound we got on a synclavier and he plays notes that sound like a foghorn. And then we have like, um, we created an ocean effect and had seagulls and stuff, you know, just little yeah. picturesque things like that. We're going to take you around in just a moment, and uh, I see all these 
bold, weird instruments. I want you to give us a little narrative uh, as we're shooting them. Shooting okay, sure. Uh, what's on the future burners for you now? What's coming up after Blackfoot? In the well, future? yeah. Um, I'm supposed to, uh, to mix. I, I record the police live at the Omni recently, and uh, I may mix, mix the album for them soon. And um, I'm hoping to work with a band called Saga that I'm meeting with today. And they're, you know, you know they're really good musicians. See what happens. But basically, I've been working them pretty solidly for about six months. So, <laughs> first thing to do is take a vacation, I guess. Yeah. Coming up. Where are you going, Eddie? I may go down to uh, San Padre. It's uh, off the Texas coast. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, all right, well, you have fun. Thank you. What's uh, rock and roll to you, Eddie? It's the only thing I've ever known, you know, so it's my whole life. Yeah. All right, it's been good talking to you. Thank you. Thanks.